All right, today's lesson is on three core theorems, the mean value theorem, the intermediate value theorem, and the extreme value theorem. The most uh, important of these is the mean value theorem. And when I say most important, it that means it's most frequently tested, most frequently seen throughout the course, and it is something that you need to know well. So the mean value theorem says the following. If you have f, which is a continuous function, and it is continuous on every point of a closed interval and differentiable at every point on the open interval, then there is at least one number c, this is going to be an x value, that is between the endpoints a and b for which the derivative at c is equal to the average rate of change of the function on the entire interval a to b. So here this is a graph of this situation. So in blue here you have the function and you have the point where x equals a and the point where x equals b and the slope of the secant line connecting these two points is just the average rate of change back from algebra 1, change in y values over change in x values. What the mean value theorem states is that if this is a continuous a function on the closed interval and differentiable function on the open interval, then there has to exist a tangent line at some x value c that is parallel to the secant line connecting the endpoints of the interval. So how do we apply that? Um, well, mathematically, we apply it like this. We say, okay, first find the values of C that satisfy the mean value theorem, which we, by the way, call the MVT. For the function F, which is equal to X plus one over X on the interval, the closed interval from one half to two. Well, before we can even apply the mean value theorem, we have to show or state that this function meets the hypotheses of the mean value theorem. So, mean value theorem applies in this case because bc is because because f is continuous on one half to two and that has to be the closed interval on which there is continuity and just to check here this function has a discontinuity where x equals zero but that is not on the given interval so on the given interval the function is continuous and the function is differentiable on the open interval, one half to two. And the reason why we don't care about differentiability at the endpoints is because that's a whole different topic of conversation on whether a function can even be differentiable at an endpoint. So the College Board doesn't even address that and it never appears in our curriculum. So now we need to find the x value where this happens. So the first thing we want to do is let's just go ahead and find the average rate of change of f on the interval from one half to two. So we basically need f of two minus f of one half. Let's see if I can make that a two there. And then divided by two minus one half, which will be three halves in the denominator. Well, f of two, when I plug in two, I get two plus one half, which is 2.5. And then when I plug in one half, I get one half plus one over one half, which is two. So once again, I have 2.5. So my numerator here is zero, which means that my average rate of change is zero. So the real question for the MVT is, is there a spot, or there must be a spot, because the MVT guarantees that there's a spot. So the real question is, what is the spot on the interval from one half to two where the first derivative is equal to zero? So we have to differentiate f. x differentiates to 1, and then 1 over x differentiates to negative 1 over x squared. And I need to set that equal to 0 because that was the average rate of change here. So if I add 1 over x squared to both sides, I get 1 equals 1 over x squared. And this will work when x is equal to either negative 1 or positive 1. But since our given interval is one half to two, I can cancel out the negative one, and my only answer here is one. And one last comment on the MVT. This is what we call an existence theorem, because the MVT, as long as we meet the two hypotheses of continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the open interval, as long as we meet those two hypotheses, we guarantee the existence of that x value on the interval where the derivative is equal to the average rate of change. 
Okay, the next theorem that we're going to talk about is the IVT, which is the Intermediate Value Theorem. And this one you probably saw either in Algebra 2 or in Precalculus, but it basically guarantees that if you have a continuous function, no discussion of differentiability here, we just need to be continuous on a closed interval where the endpoint y values are not the same, then there has to be some x value, we call it c, on the open interval such that f of c equals n. Well, n is any y value in between the beginning y value and the ending y value. So that basically just says if my first y value is here and my ending y value is here and my function is continuous, then I must have passed through every y value in between the beginning and the ending y value. This is very commonly used to prove that there is a zero or an x-intercept of a function. So for example, back in Algebra 2 or Precalculus, you perhaps did some work where you showed that on a polynomial, which is always continuous, that you had a negative point on the polynomial and then a positive point on the polynomial. I should say negative y value and positive y value. The IVT guarantees that on a continuous function where the sign changes on y values, that you must cross through the x-axis on your way from one y value to the other. Now, it's not always used just for the existence of an x-intercept, but it is frequently used for that. So that's what we're using it for here. Use the intermediate value theorem to show that there is a zero of this polynomial function on the interval from one to two, and it's a closed interval. Well, we first have to state that the hypothesis of the mean value theorem is met. So IVT applies because f of x is continuous. And actually, f of x is continuous everywhere, so we don't even have to worry about the interval from 1 to 2. All polynomials are continuous everywhere. So then we just are going to compare f of 1 and f of 2. f of 1, just by substitution, is negative 1. And f of 2 will be 5. So I have 8 minus 2 minus 1, which is 5. Now, because these signs changed, we have guaranteed the existence of an x value for which f of x, or f of c, is equal to zero. Notice that they didn't ask us what the zero of the function was. They just asked us to show that there must be a zero of the function. Now, our third and final theorem is called the extreme value theorem. And we don't have a practice problem for this one. This one just says if we have a continuous function on a closed interval, then the function must have an absolute maximum value, which is a y value, and an absolute minimum value, which is a y value, for some numbers on the closed interval. So we just have four examples here. This is our beginning y value. This is our ending y value. Here, somewhere in the interior of the curve, there is a highest y value and a lowest y value. On the next example, the end point, the left-hand end point, is the highest y value. And the lowest y value, the absolute min, is somewhere in the interior of the curve. On this next one, the absolute max is in the interior of the curve, and the absolute min is at the end point. And then on this last one, it's just a constant function. So every single point on the entire domain of the function is the absolute min and the absolute max.